This video contains the inner workings of OutputTax. As mentioned in the background VAT video, the VAT Act provides for two types of supplies. Taxable supplies consisting of supplies at the standard rate of 15% or supplies at the zero rate, as well as exempt supplies. The zero rating of a supply always takes preference over it either being exempt or standard rated. The tax fraction is the fraction calculated in terms of the following formula. In order to be able to calculate the VAT component of taxable supplies at the standard rate, it's necessary to apply the tax fraction to the consideration of such supplies. Therefore, the R over 100 plus R, where R is the rate of tax, that's 15%, that gives you 15 over 100 plus 15, which is 15 over 115. So in other words, if you have an amount and you need to determine the VAT component, and that amount is inclusive of VAT, you will take that VAT, am that amount and you multiply it by 15 over 115. If you have an amount which is exclusive of VAT, and you need to determine the VAT component, you take that amount, multiplied by 15 over 100. VAT is primarily collected by enterprises that are registered for VAT as agents for SARS throughout the production and distribution chain. If an enterprise is therefore registered for VAT, he is a vendor and he makes taxable supplies of goods and services, it must charge output tax on these supplies and collect it from the recipients of the supplies. If the vendor then acquires taxable supplies of goods and services from another vendor, which is the supplier, the VAT paid on such expenses may be claimed as input tax. Output VAT is levied on the supply of goods or services in South Africa by a vendor in the course or furtherance of an enterprise carried on by him, or the importation into South Africa of goods by any person, doesn't need to be a vendor, or the supply of imported services to a non-vendor or to a vendor in respect of non-taxable supplies. That is levied on the importation of goods and services. When goods and services are imported into South Africa, even in the case of a non-vendor, the foreign seller will not charge any VAT. However, the government levies VAT at the border and the output VAT is paid by the importer at the border post and collected by a customs and excise source official. VAT is levied on the importation of goods as it would be to the disadvantage of local suppliers if persons could buy the same merchandise overseas at a lower price because the suppliers overseas did not have to increase their prices with 15% VAT. To level the playing fields to some extent, the VAT cost is borne by the importer of the goods. If goods that are imported are used to make taxable supplies, the VAT vendor can claim back the VAT that was levied on the importation as an input tax deduction. Supplies charged at the zero rate are often referred to as zero rated supplies. This means that they are taxable supplies, although they are charged with VAT at zero percent. This enables the vendor then to claim back all the input VAT. There are many examples of zero rated supplies. I am going to name but a few. First one, direct exports. We have our fuel levy goods such as petrol and diesel. The sale of a going concern, in other words, if you sell your entire business to someone else. And also a few basic foodstuffs. For example, brown bread, whole wheat brown bread, maize meal, samp, rice, pilchards, milk, fresh fruit and vegetables, vegetable oil, eggs and lentils. 
For the disposal of an enterprise as a going concern to be zero rated, the following criteria must be met. The parties must, at the time of conclusion of the contract, agree in writing that the enterprise will be an income earning activity on the date of its transfer. All the assets necessary for carrying on the enterprise must be disposed of by the supplier to the recipient. Just remember that it's not required that all the assets be disposed of, only those necessary for carrying on the enterprise. The parties must at the time of the contract agree in writing that the consideration for the supply is inclusive of that at the rate of 0%. Both of the parties, the supplier and the recipient, must be registered vendors for VAT purposes. No output tax is levied in respect of exempt supplies and no input tax relating to the expenditure on these supplies may be claimed. There are also quite a number of examples of exempt supplies and I'm only going to name a few. First of all, we have the financial services that are exempt. However, the fees relating to these financial services are not exempt and that is usually levied at the standard rate. For example, bank charges. The next one, donated goods and services. The supply of donated goods and services by an association not for gain is exempt. The supply of residential accommodation is exempt. The above therefore implies, for example, that the supply of a house or a flat to another person who in terms of a rental agreement use the house or flat mainly for residential purposes is exempt from that. The supply of commercial accommodation is subject to VAT at the standard rate. Now commercial accommodation is defined as lodging or board and lodging together with domestic goods and services in any house, flat, apartment, room, hotel, guest house, etc. Output tax must be levied on the full value of the supply where accommodation and domestic goods and services are supplied by a hotel or guest house for a period of 28 days or less. If it is supplied for 28 days and more, the consideration in money is deemed to be 60% of the all-inclusive charge. This 60% will apply from the day, from day one if the period exceeds 28 days. There are also a few other examples of exempt supplies such as the transport of fair paying passengers, which will be discussed in the next slide. And then lastly, education. The supply of qualifying educational services by the state, a school, a public higher education institution, university, technical or college. Then also examples like trade unions, the supply of childcare services by a creche or an after school care center, these are all exempt supplies. There are a few rules pertaining to transport services. Let's look at a few examples. Exempt transport services are the following. Travel by road or railway of fair paying passengers within South Africa is an exempt supply. Taxable transport services are the following. Travel by air in South Africa is a standard rated supply, as well as the transport of parcels by road, rail or sea. Zero rated services are as follows. Travel by air when a leg of the ticket is outside of South Africa is a zero rated supply. Travel in a game viewing vehicle or hearse is also subject to VAT at the standard rate. And then the letting of vehicles by a car rental enterprise does not constitute an exempt supply, as the nature of these types of enterprises is to supply vehicles on a regular basis, 
That is to say, it represents taxable supplies. To avoid any confusion about whether a transaction is a supply or not, and whether certain transactions are deemed to either be a supply of goods or a supply of services or not, deemed provisions are contained in Sections 8 of the VAT Act. First of which are ceasing to be a vendor. Output tax becomes payable on goods owned by a person on the day he ceases to be a vendor, except for goods in respect of which input tax was denied. On date of ceasing to be a vendor, output tax becomes payable on all outstanding balances owing to suppliers not older than 12 months. The next deemed supply will be your indemnity payments. The reason for this deemed supply rule is as follows. If, for example, a vendor's stock is stolen and he receives cash from his insurance company, he is effectively in the same position as he would have been had he sold the stock. SARS wants the VAT on that disposal. I'll discuss a little bit more detail on the indemnity payments in the following slide. The next one are your supplies to independent branches. When a vendor consigns or delivers goods to an address outside of South Africa or provides a service to a branch or main business that's permanently located at premises outside South Africa and is excluded from the definition of enterprise, such vendor is deemed to make a taxable supply of goods or services, as the case may be, in the course of his enterprise. And lastly, we have our fringe benefits. The provision of certain fringe benefits to employees by a vendor is a deemed supply and is therefore subject to that. The following employment benefits are not subject to that. Cash allowances, for example, entertainment, subsistence and travel allowances, subsidies, long service awards, the supply of meals and refreshments, free or cheap holiday accommodation, residential housing, interest-free and low-interest loans, paying a debt on behalf of an employee, share incentives or plans, pension and medical aid fund contributions, payment of home telephone expenses, bursary schemes, international transport, the supply of a motor car at less than market value, and any fringe benefit to the extent that it's granted in the course of making exempt supplies. Deemed supplies, indemnity payments. Premiums for long-term insurance policies do not attract VAT as this is an exempt supply of a financial service. When a vendor receives a claim under a short-term insurance policy, the vendor is in certain circumstances obliged to account for output VAT on the claim received. This is the case where a vendor receives an indemnity payment or a claim under a contract of insurance which relates to all taxable supplies, both zero rated and standard rated, or is indemnified under a contract of insurance by the payment of an amount of money to another person and the input tax was claimed on acquisition. There is no deemed supply where payments relate to the total reinstatement of goods for which an input tax deduction was denied. In other words, no output VAT will be levied. Fringe benefits. The consideration in money for the supply of a fringe benefit other than motor vehicles is deemed to be the cash equivalent of the benefit as used for income tax purposes multiplied by the tax fraction. Now the following fringe benefits are subject to VAT. First one, assets given to employees. This refers only to assets given free of charge or at a low rate. There is, however, no VAT applicable to assets supplied for entertainment purposes, zero rated or exempt supplies or motor vehicles. The next one, is the right of use of an asset given to, employee, to an employee. This is, for example, the use of a company car provided to an employee. And the last one, services made available by the employer to the employee for
for private purposes. The calculation of output VAT in respect of the use of a motor vehicle. Step 1. Determine the value of the motor vehicle excluding VAT and finance charges. Step 2. Determine the consideration for the use of the motor vehicle. This is the value that you determined in step 1, multiplied by 0.3 or 0.6%. If the input tax was denied, you will use 0.3%, and if it was not denied, you will use 0.6%. Step 3. Deduct the following. If the input tax on the vehicle was claimed, all amounts paid by the employee to the employer excluding finance charges and fuel or if the input tax on the motor car was denied all amounts paid by the employee to the employer excluding finance charges fuel and the portion of the amount that relates to the fixed cost of the motor car then 85 rand if the employee bears the full cost of repairs and maintenance step four Multiply by the tax fraction to determine the output tax. And the last step, you will multiply by the percentage of taxable usage.